What's up everybody? I'm Sonya Lee and I'm here on the Silver Eagle Sessions. This song is called Last Dream of the Thrill. Brand new one. like a bell down the street I can hear sirens singing don't go babe don't go there held my tongue like a sword in a fight hit my cheek just to swallow my pride but I'm still here singing to a bird on a wire don't go baby don't go there
down the street I can hear sirens singing, don't go, babe, don't go there. What's up, everybody? I'm Sonia Lee. I'm here on the Silver Eagle Sessions, and this song is Sweet Annie. I've been burning bright for so long I can't remember Pretty girl in late night bars seem to be my line of work Believe me when I say I can't stay this high forever Yeah, I've had all I can stand It's time to lay this body down Sweet Annie Can I stay you a lie but an empty bed and the words I say don't carry any weight if I could take back yesterday find a way to start it over turn around put that bottle down yeah I pray it's not too late sweet Annie Sonia Lee and I am on the Silver Eagle Sessions. Sessions. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to play this song Never Stopped for you. I 
gotta go Follow me everywhere I go Yes, I've got a memory For place and time I can't shake it no Welcome back, season two of Serial Voice. Welcome back, season two of Silver Eagle Sessions. Uh, it's our pleasure. You just heard some songs from the very talented singer songwriter Sonia Lee, yes. gracing us all the way from Nashville. So thank you very much for joining us on the Eagle. Hey man, that's, this is so cool to be here. I can't even express. I feel super duper honored. To be honest, I feel like I'm like in this whole time warp of. <laughs> Greatness and there's so much juju in this bus. I'm like, juju. I dig it. It is, yeah. it is. We call it a vibe, but you, juju, you're right, and yeah. especially acoustic. So we appreciate having you. So. Absolutely, it's been a long time coming. We've been, I know, we've been talking back and forth, you know, for a few months now, trying to make something yeah. happen. So I'm glad that it worked out. We got to play a show together uh, the other yeah. day, and then now we're doing this. So yeah, yeah, really glad to it's have. It's funny. You. I talked to my dad afterwards at. Uh, you know, our dads went to high school together. They did, yeah, yeah, which is random. And so my dad said he talked to your dad 
and he said, "Huh? Who would ever thought our 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 kids would be oh, yeah. playing a show together?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. It's it's crazy how stuff like that works out. It's just That's wild, so man. random. Yeah. So you're down in Florida, but are you originally from Florida, or? Uh, I was born in Lakeland. So okay, so you're originally yeah, from Florida. Okay. Yeah. But you know, mom. I always say that I was born in Lakeland. My 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 dad's side of the family is from Florida. My mom's side was from Alabama. So I was raised in Georgia and Florida and Alabama. I'm just all in that little area. All that's where my kind of growing up roots Dixie. are. Yeah, and then you just <laughs> flat flavor in a little Indiana in there. A little Indiana, just a little dab of that. Just a little Indiana, <laughs> maybe just a fleck of South Carolina. Awesome. Just a flag. Uh, I'm from North flag. Carolina, so I don't know. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I used we, to live in Irmo, which is not, nowhere near. What part of North Carolina? Western, Western North Carolina. Oh, cool, right on. I spent a lot of time in Asheville. You know? Oh, Asheville, yeah. yeah. Good I people. love Asheville. Yeah. All right, well, enough of the geography lesson. Talk a little bit more about <laughs> your songwriting, because you're a professional musician. You're doing yeah. it. That's your full-time gig. What was that catalyst, that aha moment when you're like, I'm going to live this life about music and not pursue anything else yeah what did it for you uh, I, I always kind of ponder this question because I ever think that watching my dad play in my life I always like really like loved being around music you know and uh, church being in church the music was always like I was raised Pentecostal, so like it was always like crunk. I've know? spent some time in Pentecostal <laughs> you services. Know? You're right; that is it can be right. And, and I felt like back then when I was young, they called it feeling the spirit, which I don't deny at all. But I felt the spirit at concerts too. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Absolutely. Later in life, so music's moving. You know, in that sense. So that and then uh i think my very first concert was loretta lynn crystal gill ironically and barbara mandrell the mandrell sisters and it was in alabama and um um i was sitting on my dad's shoulders watching loretta lynn and uh i you know i just told my dad i was like i just knew then and i was so super duper young i think i was five and loretta lynn like bent down and like looked at me you know and sung sung at me and I was like oh I can do this you know too but I was just a little kid but I was always drawn towards music and never had like a B plan there were a couple things that I thought I might want to do um but music was has always been you know that thing we'll talk a little bit more about the success that you've had in Nashville having some top 40 hits under your belt the one that you just performed Sweet Annie and I didn't want to, you know, go directly into that line of questioning. I suppose <laughs> that you've answered those questions quite a bit over the years. But uh, tell me more about that process when you're collaborating with an you know, artist like Zach Brown and some of the other folks that you wrote the song with. If you like to give them credit or you know give them a shout out as well, what's the process like to you know get? Yeah, how did you get hooked up with that? Uh, well, I mean, for the for for Sweet Annie, like. I was on the road with Zach and uh, the band and um, opening on the Southern Ground Tour, Breaking Southern Ground Tour, and, uh, you know, just song, singing and songwriting, you know, on the buses at night, you know. and But that particular song, White Durrett, came up to me. I remember the first time I heard about this song. White Durrett had the idea for the song, and he came up to me. We were, I think we were playing Merle Fest. Nice. Merle Fest is in my hometown. Yeah, okay. That's in okay. my hometown. All right, so okay. that's nice. Cool. Yeah, Merle. so we were playing Merle Fest and um I think I still have the voice memo um uh from my phone of Wyatt like singing me the chorus of Sweet Annie. He's like, I got this idea for this chorus. What do you think? you know? And um I was like, Man, that's awesome, you know. I didn't know again that I was gonna be a part of that <laughs> song, you know. The same thing happened with Goodbye and Rise. I had no clue that I was gonna be a part of those. But uh, we've done a lot of songwriting. I've done a lot of songwriting throughout, you know, uh, the the years and stuff. And it's it's different with every person, you know what I mean? Definitely. So when question. you're writing your original music, what works best for you? Just to lock yourself in a room or does it come in spurts or? It depends. Well, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the songs that, um, I mean, I, I've co-written a lot of songs that I really love, but a lot of the songs that 
or from that well that I can't reach with another person in the room. And we, I think every songwriter understands what I'm talking about. Like, co-writing's one thing. Your well is a whole other thing. I'm like 99.9% a well writer. Like, I, yeah. I have yeah. a hard time writing with other people. Like, it, I just, it feels like the song is no matter what they come in with, even if it's a good line, it's deviating from the, you know the path that that I'm that going you're toward. To it's go hard for me to let it go. Yeah, that, yeah. You know, it's so it's yeah. I'll, that's a, that's what I learned about like co-writing and doing it more and more, understanding and giving the grace and the space for yeah, something new to control. be birthed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because as a songwriter, you know, you kind of like you you get you latch onto a vision of how you Absolutely. want it to unfold and. Then, you know, sharing that sharing that vision with the other people is is what that craft is about. Yeah. You know what I mean? It really is and, a craft into unto itself to have to work with somebody in that right, way. Yeah. Like you got to trust then, each other. Ex- truly, it's crazy. it really you know, is. You wouldn't it expect is. that from an outside point of view, but like, yeah, you really got to trust each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And another thing that we want to do with Silver Eagle Sessions is inspire other generations of songwriters and performers to continue. And that's why, you know, mm-hmm. ask you about how you, when you knew you knew, and that's you sold all the way out for it. Um, it kind of explained a little bit about how you're driving income from songwriting, being having publishing deals or, mm-hmm. or that sort of thing. I mean, it's probably changed a bit since I got into my publish, first publishing deal, which was you know, on Zach's label with Southern Ground. But since I've I've written for Hori Pro and I now write a BMG and um uh it it's changed for me as far as like making music from writing songs. Is that the question? How how to do that or how to get hooked up with the publisher? Well, no, well yeah, how do you get hooked up with a publisher? I mean, if you're just someone out there, whoever's listening, and they're like, I've got this great song, and I would like to collaborate with someone, I think it could be a top 40 song, and you had, you know, how would you go about it? I'm just going to guess most of it is right place, right time. (laughs) Right place, right time, and I think if some some place like Nashville is like a place that you can go get on songwriter rounds and just play anywhere you can and just start getting your music out there and, and, you know, let's just isolated to Nashville that place is it's, it's so filled with different publishers everywhere you know you never know who's in who's listening there and anywhere for that matter but yeah. um if if I was you know trying to do that I think that that's a good start or um getting involved with your PRO at like BMI and BMI your representative there they can introduce you to publishers and things like that Get get a PRO and get find out who's running your region or the closest one to you and try to try to get involved with that. Develop that relationship and like just different kind of meeting songwriters, writing with other published songwriters is a good way because then your writing's going to get heard yeah. by other publishers and stuff like that. Um, it's a lot of networking. Like it really is. Yeah. You know, there's no secret way. It's just like. Yeah. You know, putting in putting in the work, showing up, those are the steps, in my opinion. Like, yeah. there's not a shortcut. I mean, you can send things in to places. You can beat down doors, but really getting into the scene, playing, performing out. Yeah. You have to assert yourself. You I mean, really, in my opinion, yeah. but, like, again, there's probably, like, any other... Yeah, you can get lucky. Somebody gets yeah, lucky sometimes. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah, it absolutely. It, it, it really is a business. I, I, got, I got lucky because... I mean, I was playing a lot in Atlanta, but, like, meeting Zach and stuff. And I was already talking to some other people before I signed uh, with Zach. But it was all about getting in and getting your music out there yeah. and playing as much. That's great advice. And the most important thing, I think, that you said is it takes the work and you have to get out there. You're not just going to sit back and be discovered. And the Internet is yeah. a very valuable tool for that, but it also— It'll trick you, though. For yeah. every one person that right. makes it huge from the Internet, there's a million other ones trying, you know, it's, so it's— even then, yeah. it's not necessarily easy. So it's it you got to put in the work. That 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 that's the part that's changing. I think that I'm learning is is how to access and use, you know, the internet to maintain and and grow your business. You know, I think it's a whole other industry now. Mm-hmm. Like from when I was trying to make it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you know, 
TikTok and everything's kind of become a very important yeah. process that very I'm simple. learning to, yeah. to grasp and understand, to be honest. What's well, so. tough, because now if you want to be a relevant musician, you know, you have to manage all this other stuff. Yes. You just you got to be your own PR person, like, to a, a maximum. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, a, yeah it's crazy, man. It's, it yeah, is. It's, I mean, I don't know exactly how it used to be, you know, but back then you didn't have the internet and stuff. And the er, I don't mean back, you know, back in the early yeah, days. You yeah, know, it's like, yeah. So it's crazy. You have it's so like, many accounts to manage yeah. and, you know, different things that I think it is expected of an artist and, a, you know, and it's, it's a, that's a, a lot. Yeah. You, you got to be good at a lot of other it things really to have is. a chance to be good at what you want to do. Yeah. You know, you can't just be, uh, uh, <laughs> back in the day. Like. <laughs> yeah. 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 You don't really stumble into it very often anymore. Yeah. That's for sure. Now that we've had, uh, some very wonderful uh, educational answers. <laughs> like, like, they are. It's nice because, you know, we haven't had, you know, you're the first person that we've had in, you know, like we said earlier, that's, uh, you know, has a, a level yeah. of success, you know, that's outside yeah. the, the local level, you know, for the most part. Um, so it's, we like the insight that you're giving on it. So That's nice. It's nice yeah. to be here. And yeah, also just personal relationships too, like you said, yeah. knowing, know, knowing people and being good to people, co- connecting people. You know, yeah, it's all being good to people. That's a, I think that's something everybody, a lot everybody, but a lot of musicians overlook. They start to get to a, a level, and it's like they're bothered by people. But I've been there, kinda, you know. But it's like you that's always got to remember that you yeah. got to be good to the people that are, you know, yeah, and the people that are booking you, especially. A lot of people yeah. like to shit on them, and it's like they're the yeah. ones booking you. Like, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. if you don't like the agreement, don't book it. But. You know. <laughs> So I, I know a lot of artists took a big <laughs> hit during the pandemic and weren't able to, you know, it took a lot of artists off the road and we haven't heard from them and it, it's kind of diluted the the talent pool, so to, so to speak. And, uh, you know, also a concern of ours is that we're seeing less and less young people dwell into being the singer songwriter and, you know, go into that place. It's, we can, you can make music electronically and that sort of thing. So yeah. um, have you seen a change in the industry since the touring was taken away during that time period and how's, how have things progressed over yeah. the last three years? I think things definitely, you, you we, you know, and for me, my experience is I left the industry one way and it came back and it's a whole, you know, it's grown it's so much different, right, different to a whole thing, other. Yeah. And I think a lot of that, um, and I, you know, and from my perspective, I think a lot of that is due to a lot of like, artists going into home concerts and a lot of yeah. online, you know, self-promotion and things like that, which was great. It kept the whole music scene alive during the pandemic, you know. Um, I think that, um, but now it showed, it almost unlocked Pandora's box to say everybody's glued to their phones even more so yeah. because yeah. of that, because that was our way of communicating you got and locked be, into the habits. Touch with the outside it's... world even more so is it the mm-hmm. only thing, and so you know now we've leaned more onto our phones and social media than I think before. And before it was already like you know everybody was like oh everybody's looking at our phones too much, but now it is a, probably the center of a everything lo- of everything. everything. Yeah. yeah. So marketing and music and everything that's that's where it's at now. That's. What you, I took a lot of time during the pandemic. I did a lot of like work on my mental health and took a pause. I, I understood that I had a, an opportunity for a pause, which I've been going so so much, you know. Yeah. And I I granted that to myself. A lot of the online concerts and stuff was the way a lot of people kind of made it yeah. because they did that with their time, and that's awesome. That's now, a good point I didn't really consider before. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, there was nothing to do, so a lot of people probably got their yeah. foothold while everybody was paying mm-hmm. attention, you know. Yeah. So, Which was brilliant, and I think that that's great, yeah. Yeah, however you can do it, do it. Yeah. yeah. Did I answer the question? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Try to um, keep open as possible, but <laughs> your dog farted in the middle. I know. I was, I was, I was like, ah, I did I was, it. Like, yeah. I was, was going to say, <laughs> it's been a while now, so if you didn't get it, it's probably passed. It she's was like, a silent. She's like, girl, they blame it on me all the time. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was Justin's feet for a second, but he's got new shoes on. So. <laughs> My buddy Wesley Barnett gave me these shoes. That's what's up. 
the the first song you played. Tell me the name of that one. Uh, oh, Last String of the Thrill. Yeah, that was very good. I enjoyed that song. Yeah, that one actually. Um, I just I played uh, a birthday show at Eddie's Attic. Nice. And um, in Decatur, Georgia, where I played quite a bit. And um, uh, that's a legendary spot. You hear about that? Yeah, yeah man, like it's, it's really cool. Um, it's a nice venue, and they they focus on songwriting and paying attention to the artist playing. It's nice. It sounds like I need to come play one of yeah, them with you. You should definitely do that. <laughs> I dude. will. We'll make it happen. I'm playing December 2nd in, at, in, uh, at Eddie's. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, so a, a bunch of us, had, uh, friends and I, had, had, re- had rented an Airbnb in Atlanta because I, you know, I live in Nashville and some friends and I rented an Airbnb. And so the next morning I, I woke up and, I kind of I I wrote that song without writing a lyric down. I just kind of sang it into my there. phone. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And um, I recently got out of the studio with Christian Bush, who you know is um one of the duets of of Sugarland, Sugarland yeah. him and his brother Brandon, and we recorded out of this uh mansion. Uh, well, uh, well, <laughs> he said well. <laughs> Oh, the castle. It's a castle. castle. Yeah, okay. it's called the castle in Franklin. Okay, and um, it's really cool. It's like a, they turn turned it into this castle into this recording studio. We did it all live. That's cool. And um, just uh, the, I think that like Castro or whatever used to, or some mafias, um, cartel used to they they bought that place and used to hide out out there. Wow. So it's old. It's got some it's juju got itself. Juju, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was cool. Yeah, man. And working cool. with Christian was really dope. And um, I'm excited. So that's going to be coming out hopefully either by the end of the year or top of 24. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you doing that one. Uh, yeah, thank I you. guess we're probably not first, but we're close. Got to be close if it has to come out yet. Yeah, it's coming. He so, produced yeah. the Meg Maroney uh, record. Uh, okay. That song, Tennessee Orange and all that. Okay. Oh, okay. That whole record yeah. him and his brother that did. Up. That whole band is the band that played on this song, which I'm nice. I'm like, That's it awesome. was really nice. And I knew some of those cats from Atlanta, like nice. Benji Shanks and stuff. So it was really nice. Um, Benji Shanks, that's a uh, Blackberry Smoke. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, Benji Shanks is on there, yeah, playing guitar. I saw them; they were on your your video for Money. I think. Oh or, yeah, hey, yeah, but, those boys. <laughs> uh, Britt Turner. Uh, yeah. The only reason I'm dropping this name right now is because I don't know Britt personally, but like yeah. when I was in the beginning of getting this bus going, like work when I first got this warehouse a couple of years ago, I was out there working on it. It was like. I'm listening to all kinds of stuff. I listen to a lot of Blackberry Smoke. Oh, and I yeah. love that band. Heck yeah, um, dude. They're badass. I love they're them. really, I mean, they're just... Good dudes too, man. <laughs> yeah, they seem like it. Like I said, I don't yeah, know person, they seem guys. like it. But <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm out there working and I get this ding on my phone and I look at it. And it's Britt. Britt sent me a message <laughs> on Instagram. And I'm like, what? Well, he's got an Eagle bus like this. Oh, you know, really? Not the same <laughs> exact one, you know, but like he's got one similar and he's having some problems with his motor. So he was getting a hold of me to see if I knew anything about it, you know, if, if I knew anybody that could help him, you know, figure it out. And I really didn't. I was new to it at that point, yeah, you know, yeah, but yeah. it was like, I kind of started talking to him a little bit on there. So it was just really cool. That's but cool. I was watching up, your video. Brit? I Listen. saw him walk through. So I was like, well, that's cool. <laughs> Britt Turner out there. What's up? Yeah. Silver Eagle Sessions with Sonny Lee. So tell us a little bit more about, you have any side projects? You heard her mention <laughs> something that's pretty cool. Uh, what else do you tell, have? Do tell. Oh, yeah, do tell. Oh, oh. <laughs> interesting that yet. you <laughs> brought this up, Grant. <laughs> um, no, I actually do. Uh, we were talking about Halloween and stuff, and it reminded me that like I'm playing in Nashville on October 27th at this um local uh bar called lipstick lounge and um so i'm gonna play and then my side project the indica girls <laughs> the indica girls <laughs> yeah yeah indica girls we're gonna open up um open up the show we're doing we're doing we do lo-fi 90s hip-hop and uh we just get crazy and uh i just produce the stuff for fun at my house and that's awesome we have a good time I nice anything like some like Two live crew nursery rhymes going on there, <laughs> or like. so. It's some we have some stuff on Spotify if you want to check it out. Cool. So well, Indica, Indica girls, girls with a Z, <laughs> with, with a Z. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crucial but, information yeah. right there with the Z. So, yeah, we're doing mm-hmm. uh, a, a, a Halloween show. It's like dress up like your favorite rocker. Yeah, <laughs> y'all were saying y'all are doing some Halloween stuff. Yeah, we might mess around with a little bit here. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's your costume going to be? 
Uh, my, me and my girlfriend are going to be Bruce Springsteen and Patty, his wife. That's cool. That's She's crazy. a big That's Patty cool. like, <laughs> When you were performing, I was like, there's some boss vibes. I was oh, like, I, I, could hear, I could hear the Springsteen. And yeah. yeah. That's nice. cool. So, but I just totally just outed my costume. But by the time this <laughs> yeah, airs, it'll be, it'll be time, fine. Yeah, you got time. Yeah. 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 That's the beauty but, uh, of pre-recorded Yeah, I'm going to give like a guitar giveaway. Like go get like a, just a little guitar. Just a, because you can get like a, a guitar for like a hundred bucks yeah. or something. That's kind of cool. And, it's a giveaway, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. For the best costume. Nice. So. so where was it? You had a show uh, last night. Down here in the general yeah. area, where, where what was that? Uh, this was at uh, Woodwright Brewery. Okay, and that's uh, in Dunedin, Dunedin, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. And uh, Grant is one of the owners. Um, and um, not me, but not another Grant. Grant. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he uh, contacted me. Him and his wife. It's his wife brews. Uh, I call her Ula, but that's not her name. Okay. <laughs> Last night I was on stage and I, I she does all the brewing of okay. all of the beers and they're really really good. Nice. That's why I couldn't remember her name. Because <laughs> um, they were that good. Yeah, and uh, Grant is a it's a wood, it was his woodworking shop and he turned it wow. into a brewery with his wife and a live music venue, and it's really cool. It's a great sound. That's um, awesome. Yeah. It's a, I feel like it's like I was just talking about Eddie's Attic. I feel like it's it's got that kind of vibe. Same vibe. What nice. they've got set up for for these songwriting sessions, but hopefully I'll be able to bring some. Yeah, some, you were maybe you mentioned that earlier. Tell us a little bit about if if you don't mind what your plan is with that. Yeah, you know. we're talking about you know me doing some songwriting stuff down here, and I love to bring music together. So bring in some Nashville uh, songwriters down for some of these. Shows in the area, so nice. I'm hoping next watch, year's yeah. going to be filled with a lot of stuff, and hopefully we'll be working together some more too. Hopefully so, yeah. yeah. We definitely want to have and you the back. Silver it's, Eagle sessions. Yeah, it's been a pleasure having you over here, and we again thank you for making the drive all the way. I know you got to get on a plane here in a little bit and yeah. fly home. But well, tell everyone how to keep in touch with you, social, yeah. links oh, your socials, and, and oh, YouTube. Yeah. Anything you want to promote with your music? Oh well, thank you. Um, Last string of the thrill will hopefully be uh, coming out soon. I'm gonna. I just released, uh, ironically, yesterday. Uh, Total. Ecl- I did a cover of Total Eclipse I saw of the something. Heart. I didn't have a chance to listen, but I saw. Yeah, the- and th- I didn't know that it was gonna be released. To be honest. Oh really? <laughs> it was day before yesterday. Yeah, and I got a, a text message with the picture of it from my publisher. I guess I did something for BMG, and they decided to release it. So. That's uh, pretty cool. I'm excited yeah, about really that. Cool. And um, check that out. Yeah, you. Yeah, check it out. <laughs> now, um, uh, yeah, if you go to sonyalee.com, please sign up for my mailing list. That is like one of the most important things. Please follow me on all the socials from there and all my side projects. I've got a side project, Rob the Man, which is more of a grunge rock, hip hop. Uh, just check it out. Uh, Rob involved, the man. In <laughs> and then I've got Indica Girls, and I'm on another side project with Daphne Willis called Tiger Tiger, which is uh, a lot of stuff for film and television. We do a lot of writing together for nice. that. And okay. so, um, yeah, we we'll just go on there and keep up to date with what I'm doing. I really enjoyed this, man. Hey, we really enjoyed so having cool. you. This has been fun. And good luck to to the future. I think that this Thank is going to have some really, really cool stories. To I tell. think so. I'm hoping yeah. so. And you'll definitely be involved in more uh, to come. So I would love to. We'd I love really for would. you to be. Cool. Well, what you think, Grant? Uh, once again, Sonia Lee, ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate you for so greatly. Like yes. this, uh, welcome back to welcome back. To welcome back. Two. I missed you. I really did. Like yeah. so much has uh, changed in our own personal lives, and I'm not going to dwell on that right now. But you know, Justin and I are in a really good place. We're ready to bring you some incredibly talented. Uh, artists like we have today and we want to thank once again Sonny Lee for joining us on The Eagle (laughs) and we will see see you on on The the Eagle Eagle. (laughs) that's cool (laughs) hey man it was so cool doing this stuff here at the